Hi, I thought I'd give you some of my thoughts on what's been going on in investment markets and in Australia and the rest of the world recently. and welcome to Tales from the Desk from uh, 2020 Financial Planning. As I said, I'm going to give you some of my thoughts what's been going on in investment markets recently and both in Australia and the rest of the world. Australia, as you know, now has a new uh, Liberal government as such that's recently come to power after the election. And one of the first things they said they announced they're going to do is they're going to have what's called a commission of audit where they're going to go over finances as such. Now, I think this new government is still going to have problems that the previous government have and this relies on revenue raising. Previously, the forecasts were for 9% compounded growth in income and withholding taxes and 5% compounded growth in company taxes over the next four years. This may prove to be a very hard road to push. Recently, the unemployment rate has increased. Now, unemployment is generally a lagging indicator. It shows you what has gone on previously, but the unemployment rate could still go higher. Retail and manufacturing are still very slow in Australia. This is reflected in us having the lowest cash rates that we've had since the, the 1950s, 1960s, being currently 2.5%. And there has been market speculation that the Reserve Bank may go lower. As you've seen, some of the recent things that have happened is the uh, Climate Change Department has been abolished. Uh, three department heads have been uh, removed from their positions by the government, so I suppose based on their previous forecast, they've got another 11,997 public servants to go as some wag said recently. Share markets both here in Australia and internationally have been very strong recently, and they've been boosted this week by the US Federal Reserve's decision not to begin tapering their bond purchasing program. For the last 12 months, effectively, the US Federal Reserve, the equivalent of our Reserve Bank, has been buying $85 billion worth of mortgage-backed securities and US Treasury investments on market, therefore pumping $85 billion of cash into the American and therefore the global financial system. This has left US rates at very low levels. They've taken the decision this week not to taper it as they were worried about the increase in long-term interest rates that has occurred recently in the US. US uh, long-term yields have actually increased about 1.5% over the last three to four months. And they were concerned that this would feed over into increased rates for uh, housing mortgages, which could stop the current growth in uh, housing prices and also people purchasing and building new homes in the US. This has had a flow-on effect to Australia that effectively the Australian dollar increased relative to the value of the US dollar, taking it back up to close to the mid-95 cent range, where previously, only a couple of weeks ago, the Australian dollar traded at below 90 US cents. So you can see how volatile that part of the market can be. Same time with that announcement yesterday, long-term yields on Australian government bonds actually dropped half a percent. So you can see where they see some of the money flowing back into uh, by the US Federal Reserve holding interest rates at very low levels. I must say, though, the US Federal Reserve has said previously that they would continue to support the markets whilst they're waiting for the US economy to get totally back on track and for unemployment to show that it is dropping quite commensurately. The US, for those people who have been there, is a very large country and a very fragmented country because what could be good for happening in, say, New York may not be the same as what's happening in the South or over in the West. Chinese economic growth still remains very uh, stable. They're currently looking at uh, GDP in, in the range of 7 to 7.5%. And you can see this reflected in iron ore prices. Iron ore prices are actually at higher levels today than they have been 12 months ago. This, again, is positive for Australia, given that iron ore and coal are our two biggest exports and make up more than 50% of the actual exports in terms of dollars of revenue that we generate from overseas. So this means BHP and Rio Tinto are benefiting from these higher prices. Also, together with you looking at them having a lower exchange rate this year than previous years should flow through the bottom line. We've seen BHP and Rio Tinto previously you know, cancel or defer larger capital expenditure projects. So they'll be looking at putting that money more to work by perhaps paying extra dividends or buying back shares in due course. Only time will tell. The higher Australian dollar does pose some problems for the Reserve Bank. Uh, in their recent minutes, they were hoping that the, the Aussie dollar would settle at a lower level. 
So this would support you know, export orientated parts of our market, plus also the retail and manufacturing arms. So if the Australian dollar does remain stronger, the Reserve Bank, given that inflation remains low, may consider further cuts in interest rates. Again, we'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, that's all I have for you now. Please feel free uh, to ring me or email me, or you can come back to us via our website or through our uh, Twitter page, or also you can log in and register on our YouTube channel as such. Anyway, bye for now. Thank you.